Hello and a very good evening and welcome to the Hampton Netball Show. Final round, round 18 coming up this weekend. We cannot wait. Still so much to play out. Like the senior football, the open netball division. We've still got places that could be swapping left, right and centre when it comes to about 3.30, 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Trish Butters, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. I'm still a school teacher, mate. Good evening to you. Well, it's, it's afternoon. Uh, yeah, good evening to you. Going well. Looking forward to the final round. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited. There's, you know, as I said when I came in, three live games that can affect the um, the five this weekend, and that's as a league. That's what we really want to see. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the teams don't want that, but mm. um, it is really good for us. And Kate, uh, welcome to you. Hello. Uh, what a season it's been, and you know, I think. The way it's been played this year is a great way to finish it as well because it's just been so tight all season and tight in the final round. Absolutely. To Trisha's point, the league would be happy, but I think there's probably a few players and coaches that maybe have had some sleepless nights mm. this week thinking that perhaps they would have sewn up a finals position uh, on Saturday. So looking mm. forward to unpacking last week and looking forward to what could happen this week. Hey, we've got two great guests tonight. We're going to go in team-wide. We're going to go umpire-wise, which, uh, which is fantastic because without a, uh, the umpires, we don't have a game. So we'll go in that direction very, very soon. We're going to go to North Warrnambool and catch up with uh, well, their former coach, but one of their star players. And I'll speak to Sky Billings. Sky, welcome to the Netball Show. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, it's a bit of an, under, uh, an understatement to say this week is uh, probably the biggest game of the season for you guys because it's just so tight, that top you know, five or six teams. Oh, look, anybody from six can still get in, so anything can happen this weekend and as long as everybody puts their best netball on the court, the finals will be what they'll be. Mm. Hey, Sky, you've had an incredible season. I've seen you a couple of times and I think your game has taken up another notch this year. Can you credit that to the fact that you're focusing solely on playing or what else is it that you think you've maybe had such a good season from? Um, I think it's just a group of girls. It's completely different to last year. I mean, you know, I had Jordan and Rach Ryan last year and mm. absolutely loved coaching them. But just the use that you have to stand up and be a role model on the court for this year, I reckon that's made me stand up as a player mm. and also to give them advice um, to keep improving their game. So it's not just about my game, it's trying to get, work them into the game and help them improve as well. Sky, you've um, you played in a few different positions on the weekend. You went back into goal shooter. Um, and also, I, I do know you've done a lot of um, work on the court with the girls and at training in that um, attacking end. Um, how do you see the attacking end lining up this weekend? Oh, look, we have like Don't five tell different... Kate. You know, but, yeah. <laughs> we don't give all your have, secrets away. <laughs> we have plenty of combinations. It's just what's going to work on the day. Mm. So anywhere from me playing in wing attack, which I've done three or four times this season, to, you know, M and I playing in the ring. Anything can happen. It's just what's going to work for us on the day. Hey, Sky, one player that I reckon has been super for you guys this year, and she's a new recruit to the club, and I'm speaking Matilda Sewell. Obviously, she's had a busy year you know, mixing basketball and so forth with her netball. But um, what a find she's been for you guys. Oh, she's been absolutely amazing. And thanks for handing her over, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't speak highly of Tilly. Every, she's like a sponge. Whatever we say, she just takes on board. Um, she's come leaps and bounds this year. So she has been an absolute credit to the, just the hard work she'll put in no matter what. Hey, Sky, I hate to ask, but how's the body holding up and you know what, what do we anticipate to see from you in 2024 oh look it's anybody's guess at this moment <laughs> um, i honestly don't know i know i'll be booking in to go under the knife at the end of the year mm. um but to what degree will be what the last few games have for me mm. um but yeah we'll just take it how it comes i've got I'm not even looking past this weekend <laughs> to start off with because I just can't afford to at the moment. So we'll see how we go. Hey, Sky, uh, big game this weekend, obviously against the Kuroit Saints. Um, as, as, as we said, so much on the line. Um, you know, what is it about Kuroit that's, you know, they're hard to play against? What's, what's their, I guess, a couple of their key features of their game? They're just strong and hard at the ball. Like, you can't take any soft passes. You can't stop your drive. Um, they're just, yeah hard working for the full 60 minutes. So if you're going to have one off minute, Croit's going to pounce on that and go hard for 
the next 10 to make you suffer for it. <laughs> um, Sky, this weekend, um, who do you think um, will you will need to beat in the correct team to... Um, I know we're talking about their strength right across the court. Um, who do you think's their um, major player that you might have to really concentrate on this weekend? Or do you just play your own style of game? Look, we'll stick to our own style of game because we know that's what works for us. Um, we don't so much focus on one individual player. Um, so we will spend time working on what connections will work stronger for us this weekend um, compared to when we line up against South or Cobden, even Port Ferry. You know, different connections work different on different days. So we'll focus mainly on um, ourselves tomorrow night at training, but you can't, like... Um, Kelsey Barling can pull anything from anywhere. Mm. So there are three or four very strong players that are threats no matter where they play on the court. Like Casey could go back to keeper, win defence. Like she's a very versatile player. So in their midcourt can swap it up and just change the game. So for us, it will be working on our connections um, and on the day changing our connections if it's not working for us. Sky, I just want to touch on um, a couple of your players, but we'll focus on Tani Porter and Maisie Barlow. I've said it a couple of times on this show, I think Tani's had one of the best seasons that you know I've seen to date. What is it about her game, but also Maisie? I feel like they bring each other into the game really well and they've really nailed that defensive combination with you know centre and goal defence. Oh, absolutely. We work most trainings on defence to try and stop it. Our attacking end is as strong mm. as probably it's going to ever get, mm. whereas our defensive line can just keep stepping up and stepping up because we do have such versatile players in there. Um, Tani and Maisie's connection down the court just is so smooth mm. and that shows when they go back into defence that they're just, they know where each other are. They listen to each other, they talk, so it's just a smooth transition from defence to attack when from, yeah, our attack into mm. the defence as needed too. Hey, Sky, we wish you all the very best for this weekend. It's such a big game, an exciting way to finish the Hampton League season. Probably not so much for the North Warner League, which is <laughs> such a tight finish, <laughs> but just in general, the comp's been so great. So thanks for sharing some time tonight. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sky. Sky Billings from the North Warner Eagles, and uh, I think she's in some pretty good form this year, Sky. She's she been is. terrific. She's been brilliant, and I would hate to see what she'd be like if she was at 100% capacity in terms of her, um, her injuries, but she's a brilliant player. She's probably one of the smartest players we have in the league in terms of her netball IQ, and, yeah, she's elevated her game this year, and, and as she spoke to, she's always been really good at developing juniors, and yeah. you can tell that the kids around her have, have come under her leadership for a number of Do years. Do you feel that's the reason, and you could probably answer mm. this too, Trish, mm. is because her and Jordan played open division netball at a very young age. So they sort of, you know, they've had that guidance and mm -hmm. what they've learnt, they've been able to then transfer it to that next generation coming through. Because they were, what, 15, 16 when they were sort of probably making their debut? Probably around played, that mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, they um, are always there and to give advice and training mm -hmm. and things. But what, I think it's been a good year for Sky without her sister. Like, um, they've always teamed very well together and I think early it was very different for Sky having to come out and play without Jordan and yeah. I didn't know I don't think she really wondered how that might happen yeah. but I think she's gone to a new level because you know she's the dominant one on the court and, and she's so athletic like gee she takes some sometimes they pass it in I thought how is she ever going to get that but she does you know um so that's not so good that they're passing like that, but it is really good. She's a, she's a fantastic player. She's a standout. She polled, she polled pretty well in the Dot Jenkins last year. She, she did. She might have been runner-up, yeah. was she? Yeah. yeah. Um, runner-up, or she was third. She was in the top five. She was. Mm. She was in the top... Oh, I have to look that up. But um, she was in top three anyway, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. we'll do so again, I, I think. so. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, let's go to our next special guest. And as I said before, we can't have a game of netball or football or any sport without our officiators. And we've got some great umpires out there, I speak of. You know, Leah Kameen, mm -hmm. but uh, you know the new uh, new one that's uh, you know could take that mantle that Shirley M McSwain award, <laughs> which uh, Leah's yes. just yes. held for a long, long time. She Speaking has. of Leo McGrath, Leo, thanks for jumping on, buddy. It's uh, great to have you on the netball show. Hi guys, how are you? Going super, mate. Hey, for uh, for a lot of us that really don't know much about you, mate, tell us how you got into the netball umpiring. Um, well, it started a few years ago, actually out of, in the Mid and League at Hawksdale. 
um, I started playing Nepo out there and then um, when you can't, you have to stop playing Nepo in that league or like any league, I think, when you turn 14. So then I started taking up umpiring and had lots of mentors. And then when I uh, moved to school in Warrnambool, I met different people, actually met Leah. Mm -hmm. Um, And then started, I think I came, got my C badge when I was in like year nine or 10 and then started umpiring Hampton then. And then I just, with the um, people around me, I've, so that would have been like what, 2018, 2019 people around me. I've had lots of mentoring and lots of coaching from great people Mm. um, to get to, I suppose, where I am today. Um, I've been, I got my B badge in the middle of last year, right before a quick trip to Europe. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So that was a good, that was a good reward. Um, (laughs) um, So yeah, I've, then been sort of umpiring, I suppose, open since the start of last season, I think. So, yeah, this is my sec- second or third season coming in, but it's just something I so enjoy. Um, there's mm-hmm. not probably many opportunities to play good netball for men mm-hmm. down here in Warrnambool. So to be able to umpire at, like, our open is a great standard. So to be able to umpire at that um, standard is... Um, amazing to be able mm-hmm. to get going yeah, and Leo, do something that I really um, enjoy. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, you, no, yeah, go. You've come along in leaps and bounds and you're umpiring and you've gone down now to um, Association Champs a few times with us and yes, um, yes. had some um, mentoring and down there. Are, are you thinking about taking it to um, a new level? What's your pathway? Um, obviously, there's um, a pathway in, in the um, Nepal umpiring fraternity. Um, yeah, so company? the way it works um, at the moment, I'm part of the Nepal, um, Nepal Victoria Talent Academy. Mm-hmm. So that sort of, um, that allows, they have different regions for that. So I'm in the West, Western region for that. And I've taken, I've gone to Western region and, um, you know, been selected for uh, grand finals and finals down there. And I think that's where they take that. The next step for me would be... Um, if I get chosen and it's, to be honest, I'm not really sure how they choose that stuff, but I think it's sort of this time of year at the moment, maybe, um, to go in the VNL squad. So VNL is over, but then they, they'll get you to do like practice matches and stuff like that leading into sort of the VNL season for next year. Mm. It would be a massive commitment. It would be amazing. Mm. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to one day go for my A badge, mm. um, it would be a lot of trips down to Melbourne and a lot, a lot of mentoring. Um, but it was definitely something I see in the future. Um, for me, I would have to get some, re- get really good at some time management and life management skills. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like netball umpiring is something I really love, something I enjoy, live and yeah. breathe it. Mm. Um, it's not like it makes me stress a lot, but I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's definitely something on the cards, maybe in the future. Mm. Um, but I just I love being able to um, down here, being able to. It's not like I'm missing out on high quality netball at all, yeah. because yeah. umpiring, you know, a game of open netball, you know, in our anyone in our top five sides really when mm. they're versing each other. It definitely makes you think. It definitely keeps you honest. And it. I love being able to do a really great job of it mm. um, and feel really accomplished when I can mm-hmm. cool. and mm. feel and love it when I can. <laughs> Leo, you know I'm a big fan of Team White and that's, you know, why we've got you on here because it is really important. Mm. Maybe this is a question for you or perhaps um, for you, Trish, but how are the umpires allocated for finals? And at what point do you sort of find out? And along the way throughout the season, are you ranked by umpire mentors or how does it work in terms of selections? Um, well, I know we'd both be able to answer this, I suppose, yeah. but um, the umpires for, for Hampton, what they do is um, you sort of find out halfway through the week, Tuesday. Um, I think Josie Logan heads the, the, I suppose there's a bit of a committee, um, Josie Logan heads the committee, and I think it's all of the netball board. Is it Trish? Just like, is it? Ma- yeah, mainly that's Josie something. and one other person. Then they just run the list past the rest of us to see um, what we think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so people nominate to um, be umpires in the finals, so that oh, they've yeah, already gone in. Mm-hmm. Um, 
they have to be badged on positive on profiles. And then Josie looks at the games that are coming up and so who, you know, so obviously some people are players, so you know, they can't umpire yeah. in that grade. Some people, you know, got club uh, affiliation. So it's a lot of logistics yeah, and, and then they've got to be available. So our umpires, and I'm assuming you are too, Leo, are in high demand around the region because yeah. they are the major league and they're the major umpires. So um, they're off district league are trying to get them at the moment and Minanera mm -hmm. are starting this weekend. So... It comes down to a lot of those factors. A lot of factors. It's not. It's not a simple, yeah. simple solution. Um, but yeah, we we are lucky. Um, and Leo may know this, but Josie was telling at our board meeting the other night. There's been 14 badge dump players this year wow. in our league. So one B and the rest will see. So. It's fantastic that clubs are developing their umpires and getting them to that next level. And Leo's B, and I'm really happy, Leo, you're thinking about going to that A, but it is a huge commitment. The next step is massive. And uh, you would know Leo's told you what she's had to go to, you mm -hmm. know, try and get the next level of badging. Um, yeah. No, it's something I'd love to do one day mm. um, and <laughs> definitely have it on the cards. But I think it's so good that we've been able to have all the C badges come through this year. It's yeah. like our league is only getting better and better. And like, I still think some, like um, a lot of our umpires, like we still need, well, obviously we need more, but I think with our league is getting better and better, our, um, our umpires still need way more developing as well. But mm. obviously that stuff takes time. Mm. Um, and so like in a perfect world, you'd have the same standard umpires yeah. to what we have players. Yeah. Mm. Um, that will take time. And I'm sure it will happen because you've got amazing people like Josie, like Leah, Shirley McSwain, I'm missing so many people, Lauren yeah. Hockley, <laughs> yeah. so many yeah. people, so many people around coaching all of these, um, Joy Aries, another one, um, around coaching all these umpires. Um, so, and like they're all people that have helped me along the way. Mm -hmm. um, Leah is still my sounding board. <laughs> <laughs> From when I come off a tough game between Croydon <laughs> North, maybe this weekend. <laughs> um, Leo, um, we've asked this with players. Um, have you seen any good junior umpires that you've umpired with so far that are coming through that we can um, oh, maybe tag, target? Um, 100%. I'm really sorry, but I can barely remember anyone's name. <laughs> 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 I bet no, there is some really great umpires. Um, actually, I've thought of one. There we go. I've thought of one um, that I see is starting to do a few open games out at Cobden, um, Aloise Chivel. And I oh, think yeah. that is, I haven't, I haven't seen an umpire myself, but mm. I saw her, I think, last year at Association Champs. And like to mm -hmm. see that development, she's yeah. obviously must, um, doing really okay to do. I think she did Association Champs last year as an unbadged umpire, which they have to get special. Permission. Um, mm. permission for and then to see her then get the badge and then doing open this year is yeah. so good and that's exactly what our um, yeah. league needs yeah. um, and I think I really just need to slip in that to get more umpires we are always a winner in team white you can never <laughs> walk off a loser <laughs> so like to get more umpires that's just one thing to get, get you across um, Thanks, Leo. and something oh. I always think of uh, always. Yeah. Hey, Fair Leo, enough. we've loved your work, mate. It's great to see you uh, in a loving life as uh, an umpire in Team Wise. And, mate, we can't wait to see you, uh, you know, get a few games in the finals and, uh, and lead the charge that way. Maybe we might see you know, yourself and Kameen tee up. Maybe. You know, maybe a GM. That would be nice. Oh, God. Imagine. No, <laughs> no it, would be, it would be my pleasure to do that with Leo. She yeah. has been so good for me all over the years and I wouldn't be like looking at even I wouldn't even umpiring open if it wasn't for her now so yeah I owe a lot to her cool. hey mate thanks Thank for jumping you. on tonight great to be able to catch up and good luck for the rest of the season buddy no worries thanks guys see ya <laughs> Leo Bye. McGrath see ya. there from Team White I love it always the winners fantastic yep. I love it that should be a slogan it should be you're doing your recruitment drive yeah always Come the winners be a handling netball umpire Team always White, a always a winner. That's a really good <laughs> I love it. It's a He did say he was going to try and get it in, so I'm glad he, I'm glad he got it in. I'd say uh, Leah Kameen, who's a bit of a wordsmith, yes. uh, would have maybe done a little bit of, uh, you know, him. Did a bit a bit of work of there just to get a couple of little oh, signs in there. Because we know Leah mm. absolutely loves it. Mm. Hey, let's look at last weekend's Round 17. We've got highlights for all five games. So we might uh, roll the tape and, uh, and look at the first of our games that were in Round 17. 
So it was obviously Camperdown taking on the Hamilton Kangaroos. It was a big game for the Kangaroos girls because they needed to win and they were able to get the job done uh, up at Glen Thompson, Kate. Yeah, they were. It was a really good performance after probably a disappointing one the week before against Croy. Uh, they had, you know, 13 goals in the first and then for the next three quarters they had over 15, which is a goal a minute, which is really impressive. Um, and Hayley Sherlock uh, had a best on court performance. Mm. She was really good the week before and I just like the way that she plays. She's really smart on the court. She um, brings Danielle Van Kalken into the game and, and she alleviates some of the pressure from, you know, putting up uh, a decent volume of goals. So... Really good for Hamilton and for Camperdown. Jess Cameron, since she's been back, yeah. has been in the best every week. Yeah. And, and I imagine that they'll be looking to retain her come 2024 mm. because she's a great player for them. Absolutely. And I see Danielle Van Kolk and chop 48 goals. So, you know, she's on fire Transfer. coming into this yeah, weekend. Yeah, DVK, superstar. <laughs> hey, let's go to you, Trish. <laughs> North Hornel and Warnable. What a game mm. of Nepal up at the Reed Oval. Mm. And uh, the Blues, their rich vein yeah. of form continues 42 to 32. Big first quarter, big last quarter for them. Um, so, you know, they were eight up at, at quarter time and um, we thought, oh, what's going to happen with North? And made a few changes and got back to two and then it was two at three quarter time and then a couple of just turnovers early in the fourth quarter and, you know, they took it away. It was probably six to eight and then I, I, they would have been disappointed with it getting up to ten at the end. But, um, yeah, it was an interest, It was a really interesting game. Like North, uh, one of them were on top in the last quarter and the first quarter. In the middle quarters, um, mm. North had them pegged and um, had a lot of pressure happening through the mid-court and, and they made lots of mistakes and missed mo- mo- uh, lots of goals. But stand out, a- Amy Wormald. Um, she won the game, honestly. They brought her out to on goal. On cue, right on cue. Yeah. Absolutely. Brought, the ga- brought her out to goal defence and she took three. She took the intercepts that won the game in the last quarter. Yeah, she's a superstar. Yeah. Portland took on the Port Ferry <laughs> Seagulls and the Tigers, only five goal winners. So... A really, really good performance there by Port Ferry yeah. to try and you know finish the season on a high. And um, Kate, they they were really good, a, a good game. Yeah, and I had a look. The last time they met, it was sixty-one to forty-eight. So, mm. you know, I think Port Ferry would be disappointed that they couldn't get over the line in in a really close game. But, you know, when you reflect on it, you you look at your your progress over the season and the yep. fact that you've you've. Um, the margin is less than what it was the first time. Shows real improvement with the Port Ferry side. Um, Laura Coffey has found her position up in attack and she shot 21 goals at goal She's attack. She's had a good second half of the year. Yeah, she has had a really yeah, good um, second has. half and she played quite a bit of defence at the first half. So shows her versatility and, and I don't know whether that's a natural position for her, but she's been playing really well from um, all reports. Yeah, and when I saw her playing, she, she played a really good game Yeah, she's game. a nice yeah, player. She's so a nice player. Yeah, a close game. Hey, Trish, South Warrnambool and Cobden, first versus wow. second, and it didn't disappoint. It was uh, high scoring, for, and you know, three-quarter time, 34 apiece, but the Bombers, they were able to break through for a victory to win by six goals, 48 to 42. And I'm just going to say I picked this, but um, <laughs> I didn't think South would have... Um, I'm glad you got that, one right. Yeah, I got one right. The two goalies in, um, and, you know, what a great win for Cobden. It was re- um, it's certainly a boost for them. Um, Annie and Holly both played. Um, no Ali O'Connor, of course, through the midcourt. But we keep talking about depth, and South have got depth, and... Cobden have got depth mm. in spades. And do you know the one we haven't talked much about, but I think she's the, the gun for them, is um, Emily Finch. She has had a super year, shooting heaps and heaps of goals every week. And no one seemed to be able to shut her down, to be honest. Um, so um, I think she's going to be there. Um, the per- Look, I've, I I've never seen a goal shooter win best and fairest. Mm. And there's a lot of other players in that team, I know. But um, she's had a super season. And the last game, Croy taking on Tarang Mortlake. The Saints getting the job done, 52-34. to 34. Kate, Millie Jennings just uh, continuing, continuing on with another great season. She was what insane on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she would have taken maybe eight intercepts. Yeah. But her aerial game is unmatched. I, I don't mm. think there's really anyone in the league that can compete with her in the air. She's so strong. Um, you know, she's playing sort of out of position. Wing defence is her natural position. Yeah. Uh, but she's really shouldering a lot of that leadership in that midcourt, and she was brilliant. It was actually a really close game. I think you know, up until half time, it was it was really close, and then um, I think we were thirteen to five goals shot in the third, and you know, and Croy just ran away with it. But mm. um, Holly Castledean for Terang, she 
is a beautiful player. Mm. Yep. Yep. And just, she'll get better as she gets more handling experience yes, too. Yeah, mm. she's just, I watched her when um, they played South and then I've seen her twice this year against um, Croy and she is such a clean player. Mm. She's, you know, very rarely out of play. Um, and for someone who's brand new in that side, the leadership she provides on court is, you know, is really incredible. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing her netball in the next 12 yeah. months. Love it. Mm. Hey, let's look at the ladder as it stands after round 17 in the Hampton Football Netball League. So let's have a look and, and let's sort of talk a bit about some scenarios. So Southbourne were on top by half a game. Now, listen... If I want to drop against the Portland Tigers and Cobden one, Cobden could take top spot. But mm. us knowing, it's probably going to be South that will certainly get yep. the job done. So they'll finish minor premiers, it appears. Mm -hmm. Then after that, Cobden looks like they'll hold on to second position. They've got you know, superior points. Croy third spot, going to be hard to outplace too. Well, they can't well, be outplaced. Mm -hmm. They'll stop top three. three. So yep. as it yep. stands, first final yep. next week is going to be Cobden take on Croy. Mm -hmm. yep. Four, fifth, sixth. This is where the interesting point comes yes. in. So the Blues are 42, obviously North Warrnambool 40, Hamilton 38. You look at the draw this weekend, North Warrnambool take on Kuroit. Mm. So that's going to be an interesting one. So if North potentially win that, they can lock it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then the other, the other interesting ones there is Warrnambool take on Cobden. So even though they're four points ahead... You know, they still could miss depending on what else happens. Mm. And then obviously the Hamilton kangaroo terrain all that game is going to be interesting as well. So... You know, Hamilton win and other, like, there's so many different scenarios. So, like, yeah. realistically, until four, four o'clock comes on Saturday afternoon, <clears throat> we don't know what's going to happen with the top five. Mm. No. I, I mean, you would think Hamilton would go in. Yeah, you would you'll think, think North they are going to miss out. beat Tarang Mortlake yeah. and they will go in. Um, you would think Cobden will beat Warrnambool. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to come down to the big game, um, North and Croyd. Out at Bushfield on Saturday. Morning. And that's a big one. It's Croydon North, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, as it was said, two it's goals in right. it first time round. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a it was a really close game. Yeah. And if North play how they did against South, mm. you know, it's going to be a really impressive game. Um, losing on the weekend, I think, in the long run, is going to hurt them. Yeah. I can see probably North as the one that might drop out, um, but. Gee whiz, I'm excited to see all the results filter through on Saturday <laughs> afternoon to see where we um, where we land. Live scoring will be well and truly um, yeah. watching oh, and, yeah, and keeping an eye on it. <laughs> and then the other thing we need to consider is draws. Yeah. Right? So there's still potential, let's say North and Croy draw, they go up to, you 42. know, 42. And then Hamilton win, they go to 42. Yeah, so percentage, percentage wise, wise like, and then well, Hamilton have a super Realistically, Hamilton, and Hamilton are a game ahead. Yeah, percentage. with percentage. Yep. Yep. So uh, what an intriguing, what an awesome season it's been. Yeah, yeah. So that's the ladder after round 17. So as we said, there's a few different scenarios to, uh, to think about. We're running out of time, guys. So let's just get a quick tip on the games for this weekend. Now, don't forget, um, round 18, you know, we'll try and get the results all on the radio as we hear them and so forth. And I know that um, you know, up on the Hampton League web, uh, sorry, social media pages, they're really, really strong with uh, getting results up too. So mm -hmm. you will not miss out. Okay. <laughs> Live scoring will be on my connect. Um, yep. North live score. So yep. that's, I think most of the games have been like and, that too. And I've been they? doing live in the last quarter, so yep. I reckon they'll have a big following on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's a big game. Problem right. is I can't watch the game in video. That's my hard thing that I, I do. a little tripod or something or other. Oh, still okay. got to move it. <laughs> okay. North one will take you on Kuroi. 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 North. Kuroi. <laughs> of course. Kuroi. I think Kuroi get the job done. South and Portland. Oh, they are. South. South. Warnable Cobden. 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 Hamilton to Rang Mortlake. Oh, do you know what? I don't think this is a done deal. Like, this no, could it's be not a done deal. deal. Like, I, I reckon their um, last few weeks have been good, bloods. Yeah, absolutely have. Um, I'll go Hamilton, but I'm not, I'm, I think it'll be really close. Yeah, I think Hamilton will, will win it. And they have to. Yeah. There's no, there's no other chance That's for them. The so, yeah, I They've think... got a couple of key drivers there that will make <coughs> yeah, sure that yeah. no, I think they'll win the it. Somerville girls, they love it. And Camperdown take on Port Ferry. I am not. Camperdown. I am definitely not tipping against my <laughs> beloved Camperdown. I'm definitely not tipping. M and the team, we're going to get it done this week, guys. Camperdown for me, too. Oh, yeah. I'm on the Camperdown bandwagon. I've, I've picked them the last few times. Any, any <laughs> not feedback last weekend, how, obviously. But... Any feedback on how young Absalom's. Uh, Dress went last week. I didn't stretch it too much, did I? Yeah, according to a few sources, <laughs> uh, she couldn't actually play because it was 
<laughs> it kept catching in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Drape me over it. Oh, a bit of fun. Uh, hey, that is the Netball Show. Big shout out to our major sponsors, Power Core, Southwest Tafe, McDonald's and Sun Gold Fresh Local Milk. Without those uh, four majors, along with all of our other great supporters, uh, we certainly wouldn't have the competition we have in 2023. Girls, cannot wait. Mm. Looking forward to talking all yeah. things finals next weekend. And just a little uh, shout out to our junior finalists on Sunday yes. as well. Final. Up at the Reed Oval. Um, we wish them all the very best of luck, along with our footballers, um, our next generation coming through. Absolutely. Yep. Hey, enjoy the weekend, guys. I know you guys will be uh, looking at life scoring <laughs> like no tomorrow. We'll be out at the court together. We'll be together. Can you imagine <laughs> Yeah, try to look out. The old, the old boxing gloves will be out. North versus Perot. <laughs> Uh, in saying that, hope you enjoy the weekend. Good luck to all the teams for the final time that are playing their final um, game for season 2023. And good luck to those that uh, were able to make it through to this year's final series. See you next Wednesday night here on the Handle League Netball Show.